Chapter 602 What to Tell the World As soon as Ray said the word attack, the creatures made from his dark magic all started to move. With no real form but fighting figures, the Behemoth clan members were confused about what to do. Some tried to attack the strange presence, their weapons going through them. Others attempted to ignore them, but ended up getting hurt. After these strange creatures would get hit by the sword, the dark magic within them would practically explode, hurting several of them in the area. Seeing this, the clan members were at a loss of what to do. The army felt like they were fighting against ghosts. Yet those entities could certainly do them harm while they were unable to do anything else. Seeing all of the creations, the Crimson Crane members were left there, amazed. It was the first time they had seen one person doing so much in a grand battle. The powers the Dark Magus has been showing us, they seem to just keep growing day by day, Reno claimed. I guess it wasn't just me that thought that then. He is far stronger than when we first met him, and those strange powers he had like that of the Light Faction Elder. They're growing as well, Kieser commented. The real thought on the Crimson Crane's mind was just, how could this even be possible? Even the most talented individuals in the world of Pagna never showed this much growth. What are you all doing? Alba shouted. We know the effects of the pill he has just taken. This is our chance now. This is our chance to strike back and send them away. The Crimson Crane members smiled as they heard this. It was time to give them payback while they were distracted with what was going on. They did what they could, hurting the Behemoth clan members, and the few eighty or so brave warriors from the city that were still alive even managed to catch Pagna warriors off guard with their attacks. Raze, who was on top of the rooftop, picked up his sword and swung it several times, creating images of more deadly creatures appearing. Mainly dark wolves would come off from his swing and hit certain areas, hurting multiple of the men. With everything that was happening, something natural had occurred with them all. It was fear. With the pillars gone and the great attack from this individual, they didn't understand. The thought was creeping into their minds. Over half of them had already been defeated, and if this continued, all of them could very well die. It was an uncommon feeling for those in the demonic faction, in the behemoth clan. But at times, charging in knowing that one would die in war, with that resolve, was fine, because they knew what they were expecting. Now, they were experiencing the fear of the unknown, and bit by bit, more and more from the behemoth clan started to retreat, until the full force was seen running away. The behemoth clan, they're no longer attacking, they're retreating. One of the warriors said, lifting his sword, blood marks on his clothes and a grave wound on the top of his head, but he didn't care. The people behind him had tears of joy as the sight unfolded in front of them. We did it, we defeated the behemoth clan, we did it. They continued to cheer loudly. No, it wasn't just us, the Crimson Crane and the Dark Magus, it was because of them too that we did it, that we protected everyone. Huge cheers that shook the entire town were heard, chanting the Crimson Crane and the Dark Magus's names, echoing until the public and the town hall could hear what was going on. Coming out from their hiding spots, coming out from the town hall, in the distance, they could see the smiles of the men that had fought hard, find the noosed ovals on Envel Bin Kam. There was also one person who had just witnessed everything. Every fiber in his body was shaking after all that he had seen in the battle. Quickly, Bubble shouted. Get me sheets of paper and plenty of ink. I have to write down everything that I saw. Like a madman, Bubble started to write the events, every detail of what he had seen, including the great shield, pills, magical powers, and more. The issue was, the more he was writing it down, the more far-fetched everything sounded. It was as if he was writing some type of fantasy novel, exaggerating the truth. The people, they would never believe the words that were written here, and they would think of it as an exaggeration. It would hit his reputation as a valid news outlet. Taking a deep breath, in the end, he had to make a decision to report the matter in a way that the people could take in, that the people could understand, and report on the facts of what had occurred that day. The Dark Magus can create not just chi pills, but items as well. The people in Flendon took up arms, and thanks to the chi pills and support of the Crimson Crane, 
they managed to fight back against the Behemoth clan. An army of a thousand strong, including the two pillars of the Behemoth clan, had invaded, and it all failed because of a single individual. It all failed because everyone had underestimated the strength of the Dark Magus. The Behemoth clan had not only lost a battle, but had also lost two of the strongest members of the clan. There was so much more that Bubble wanted to report, but the world wasn't ready for it yet. As more people got information bit by bit, then Bubble could start informing everyone of what was happening. Even now, he was looking at the equipment that he was using. There is still a lot that this world knows nothing about, and I will reveal everything out there to everyone, Bubble claimed. Release the report. The news from Bubble's outlets reached every faction, every inch of the content, as people spread the news of what had occurred. There was infighting in the demonic faction, and out of that infighting, an incredibly strong figure had appeared. One of those that had read the report had the biggest smile on his face. In the depths of his clan's base, Belil had a wide grin on his face. Ha ha, Shamo had sent more people than I thought he would. Honestly, if I knew what was going to happen, I would have sent one of my sons to protect them, Belil claimed. Yet, despite that, his two pillars were killed, and we all know what will happen once the pillars are destroyed, the whole thing will come crashing down with just a little push. Both Reyna and the Dark Magus have done splendidly. I should reward them for everything that has occurred. Laughter continued from Belil as he wondered just how would Shamo react to all of this now. What would become of the Behemoth clan? Regardless, all of that would have to wait because there was no more time left. The martial arts tournament, where all three factions would meet, had arrived. Chapter 603, A New Start After the battle with the Behemoth clan was over, the town of Flendon was going through a change. For one, they were more confident about themselves. Having survived against the strongest in the Behemoth clan, they no longer felt like their lives were threatened. Now, they were filled with energy even more so than before when the place was in a sorry state. On top of this, a lot of the town was destroyed due to the battle Ray's had with one of the pillars and the fighting that had occurred on the edge of the town. Yet, it didn't bother them too much anyway. For one, the houses were already a mess in the first place, and in a lot of cases, it was going to be easier to rebuild than repair. With this newfound vigor, all they needed to get were supplies to work with and food. This wasn't too much of an issue either. Due to the report that had come in about the Crimson Crane besting the Behemoth clan, a lot of credit was put towards the alchemist and his pills. Fixteen used this to his advantage to prop up the prices even higher. Using these funds, they could purchase more supplies than before, and if anything, their finances might never have to be a worry at this rate. They would soon learn that although the pills had a great effect, the battle wasn't down to the pills. Lightsfell M. What had also occurred were requests. Fixteen had received a number of messages from different clans asking for Rays to build them weapons as well. Some were paying quite a high amount. In this case, Fixteen honestly thought the clans were undervaluing the weapon's strength with their offers. This might have been because they were unable to see the effects of the weapons themselves. Most clans just wanted to test to see if they were of good quality. So Fixteen rejected them all and Reyes had stated that he wouldn't be making weapons for them anyway. The weapons would be for his group and the Crimson Crane's trump card against the other clans, while the pills would be what they would make for income. Visit Navel Bin Siem for the El Test updates. Another phenomenon that had occurred was clans in the area, as well as the local kingdoms, donating supplies to the town now as well. Just now, Fixteen had returned to the town hall that was getting an upgrade in materials and size, and he had found several items stationed in the front, including timber and food supplies. This is from the Rulga Kingdom, sir, one of the workers claimed. I see. We shall send them our thanks and tell the mayor to make a note of all of these gifts. I want to know who's paying the most attention to us, Fixteen replied. The gifts from the kingdoms and empires were them trying to gain favor with the clan. Knowing that a clan now had strength to go against the behemoth clan, who wouldn't want them on their good side? As for the gifts from other clans, 
When heading inside, Fixteen had opened up a recent large crate. There were crafting materials as well as power stones inside, along with a little note. Good job in wearing the Behemoth Clan. Someone had to put them in their place one day. The note read. Most of the messages from the clans were along these lines. It appeared that many had a dislike for the clan and were just sending thanks for winning a battle against them. Typical response from those from the demonic clans. Right now, the Crimson Crane was also spending time with the citizens themselves. There was an inflow of new citizens as well as old ones that had left the town before, thinking it was a safer place to be. The Crimson Crane had also made sure to reward those that took part in the battle with coin and some of the treasures that they were all receiving. This just encouraged more to take up arms next time and wanderers like themselves to perhaps be hired in the future if need be for protecting the place. Rather than training though, most efforts were going into rebuilding the city, making it more functional, sturdy, and easier to defend compared to before. Hey, I'm a little worried with all this work we're doing. That Shyam O is going to come and just destroy everything again, Kieser said. Isn't he going to be extremely pissed now that this has happened? Annoyed, yes, Reno replied as he applied some medical herbs and gave a red pill to one of the citizens who had a little accident during repairs. However, Shamo won't be able to attack. Everyone in the demonic faction will now be concerned with one thing, and that's the upcoming tournament. You're right, the citizen said, bowing to thank Reno. A member of the Behemoth clan is even taking part, and no one dares to cause trouble within the faction while at any time we could have a war with the other factions at hand. Wait, if a war happens now that we're part of the demonic faction, will we get dragged into this as well? Froma asked. Right, and if that does happen, then we need to be ready, Alba said. We have seen what the Dark Magus's weapons can do. Faction, will we get dragged into this as well? Froma asked. Right, and if that does happen, then we need to be ready, Alba, but right now, we don't even have supplies ourselves for him to create the best weapons for ourselves. Once we're done helping the citizens out, we should try to gather all the materials that are needed to create a weapon for each of us. The upcoming tournament will be a good time as the town will be at its safest. The others agreed. Alba, Froma, and Lily were the three left that didn't have weapons from the Dark Magus yet. Alba, didn't you say something about Ray's taking part in the tournament? Lily asked. And where even is he right now? The town of Flendon had one portal. It was one of the reasons the Flesh Clan had stayed in such a place and one of the ways they still managed to survive. In that very dimension filled with deep jungle and greenery, Ray's was currently inside. He stayed there, sitting on the ground. In front of him, the body of a large beast with small limbs lay dead. In his hand, Ray's had a crystal that was glowing. He was absorbing its power into his magic core. I have managed to advance my Pagna body to the middle stage, but now, of all things, the knowledge that I already knew my star level has been left behind. I need to increase my star level while also increasing the different attributes I have. Hopefully, if I come across different beasts, I'll also be able to increase my attributes and gain new affinities with different types of magic, such as earth and water. It will help the town out well. There was also another reason Ray's was in here. Flicking his hand, worn out scrolls as well as books were placed in front of him. I will also use this time to learn as much dark magic as I can. I will be ready for anything that happens in this tournament, and I will make sure to bring back Safa and the others, no matter what. That is the decision I have made. 